I ask myself, what happens if I play strategies given to me by an AI against Europe's best players? So I did exactly that. I asked ChatGPT to give me its best Zerg strategies and applied those on a day full of letter games against the likes of Spirit, Maxpex, Clam, Showtime, Serial, and many more. And even though Zerg is known to be the most reactive race in StarCraft, on that day we let the AI strategies decide what we were going to play no matter what our opponents were up to. So with that recipe of disaster in mind, let's see how that day turned out. To start things off, first I needed to figure out what strategies I will have to play, so I asked ChatGPT for three strategies in each matchup at Grandmaster level. We've had a wide variety of strategies from relatively normal ones like Roach Ravager timing attacks and Muraling Bane, to wild ones like Swarmhost Corruptor against Protoss and Swarmhost Infestor vs Zerg. I decided to play the strategies in the order they showed up, so I wouldn't pick the one I thought would work the best and instead force myself to play what it tells me to no matter what. With the strats lined up, it was time to change one of my barcode names to ChatGPT and start queuing games. I used a barcode at around my usual MMR, in this case it was 6813, which would slot in at rank 5 on the European ladder. Let's keep that number in mind to see if we gained or lost MMR at the end of the day. I came in prepared to bleed MMR left and right, instead I ended up being surprised with the outcome, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. My first opponent was Clam. However, it was not his Terran I queued into, it was his Protoss, which to be fair is above 6500 MMR and higher ranked than a bunch of full-time Protoss pros. Definitely not someone to underestimate. My instructions from the AI were to link Bainolin and to overwhelm the Protoss army before my opponent can get their higher tech units out. It didn't specify when exactly I should hit, and since I know super early game Ling Bane Olins aren't viable and an automatic loss against any opener with a Stargate or a Stalker, I decided to go for one that was gonna try to kill the third base and still hit before the higher tech units were out, just like the AI wanted. By the way, I messed up the recording of this game so it will be from replay, but all games after this one will be including my first person view. I will also include all the replays of the games I've played in the description below, so if you want those, check it out. So after playing a standard early game, I decided to rush into a quick plus one and had a good amount of zerglings on the map to morph into banes. I made sure that the oracles were zoned out from my third base miner line to not see my drone count and always hit the extra links I was producing. The moment the banes were done, it was go time. I caught the adepts on his third base and there wasn't much more to defend besides his oracles. So I not only killed the third nexus, but also enough probes to force a counter on him from clam. The moment the counter attack failed, he GG'd out and we got our first win on the board for Jet GPT. Next up was a Protoss player by the name of Rom, and the strategy the AI paired us up with was a Roach Hydra timing attack at around 8 to 9 minutes. Now, 8 to 9 minutes is very late for a timing attack, and Roach Hydra also isn't the best composition to kill Protoss players with, so I figured I'd drone up heavily and try to attack when I'm maxed and start trading from there. I had a very mediocre early game filled with drone losses. My opponent went for a macro heavy opener, 3 oracles with early 6 gases into an immortal Archon Disruptor army. Upon scouting the 6 gases, I knew I could drone up my 4th base right away, in order to hit an even stronger timing later on, but once I scouted the Robobait tech, my heart sunk a bit. Disruptors are the ultimate counter to my strategies. Around 8 minutes, I wanted to attack, but I realized my opponent wanted to clear some of the creep that reached the front of his 3rd base, so I decided to act weak and pull back in the hopes of an overextension. And even though my opponent tried to be careful on the edge of creep, he pushed forward slightly too far and ended up getting his disruptors focus fired and his army dismantled. We won the game with the attack the AI wanted us to do right before the 9 minute mark, barely losing any supply doing so and made the score 2-0. I immediately queued the next game and got our first Zerg opponent. Our instructions this time around were to go for a Roach Ravager attack around the 5-6 to six minute mark, which was definitely the most standard and best strategy we've received so far. After a passive 3 hatch versus 3 hatch opening phase, I did exactly that as early as possible, and attacked him with a 2 gas roach pass at the 5 minute mark. Usually just killing the 3rd base is enough damage, but I figured that Chad GPT strats are going so well, let's try to run into our opponent's natural base. That didn't work quite as intended and we took a bad fight, but we killed enough drones to continue into a longer game. After killing his roach horn to stop early roach speed, I came back with my zerglings to save my own 3rd hatch and barely survived our opponent's counterattack. From there, we were far enough ahead to close out the game with a 5 gas Roach Ravager attack. The fourth game was against Clem. This time, however, it was his Terran we were up against. Clem is probably the most difficult opponent for me in Europe, even when I do what I believe works best against him, so this was gonna be the first real test. And the strategy given to us was the exact same as the game prior to this, but in a different matchup. 
Now, I know Clem would open Banshee, and I tried to alert him countless times with different roach timings and knew none of them worked. So I decided to go for an older one where you drop queens as anti-air together with a roach ravager link bust. In order for this to work, I took a risk and tried to get my links on the map for an early run by to weaken his later defenses. But before I could test Clem's defenses, he tested mine and ran past my queens. Without the links on my side of the map, he didn't only scout what I was up to, he straight up killed too many drones for me to continue with the attack. And I was forced to accept our first loss of the day. The next game was where things got really fun. We fit our third Protoss opponent, which meant we had the first truly wild strategy from Jet GPT, Swarm Host Corruptor. I was committed to playing with this unit composition no matter what, but in my mind, I couldn't imagine too many scenarios where this could work. I didn't see a chance at even winning against something like Oracles into Mass Blink Stalkers, much less if my opponent opened with something other than Stargate. Best case was surely if my opponent went for Skytos, since I couldn't simply die to ground compositions, but since straight up Skytos isn't really a thing anymore, my plan was to let my opponent scout the Spire, hopefully force him to make some Phoenix, go Swarmos Corruptor and try to harass while staying alive at home with Spinecrawlers. The game started off with a standard Oracle into Ground Toss opener. I went for plus one melee to try and have something that is good against Blink Stalkers and hope to contain him with those. My opponent didn't go for an aggressive style and instead tried to expand fast with 8 gas, so I had the chance to get 15 Swarmos and 5 Corruptors up and running quickly. The trading began. I made sure to start massing spine crawlers early on, while trying to use the swarm hosts and corruptors to trade well on the Protoss side of the map. The fact that my Protoss had a lot of blink stalkers made it hard to use the swarm hosts and corruptors aggressively, so I always tried to bait him towards the other side with the zerglings first. Since swarm hosts are very supply inefficient, I made sure to stay on a relatively low drone count at all times, so that I can defend and attack together with the spines if he ever decided on an attack. My opponent eventually transitioned into Skytos units and we played a full on late game. This game honestly deserves a video on its own, but since this is about the full day of games, I'll say what is important. We've traded effectively enough with our multitasking and spellcaster control to force a GG from the Protoss and take home the win with what started as Swarmhost Corruptor. Since we've used up our initial three strategies against Protoss, I asked the AI for three more and kept going. Our sixth opponent was none other than Cyril, and the strategy we got for him was actually kind of perfect. The bane of Cyril's CVZ existence, Ling Bane Mura. The game started off pretty standard, till Cyril figured out it will most likely be a Mura build. His plan against Mura, if he smells it early, very often is to go for a pressure to kill the third base with a bunch of roaches and banes. The distance from third to third on Grassvan is not very big, so actually defending our third base seemed pretty hopeless until Cyril lost the only two bane links he brought with the attack. Here I had a chance to try and overwhelm with Ling Bane, especially if I had started a couple of spines on my third beforehand because he had to wait for the extra banes. The second best option was to counterattack and sack the third base while saving my drones towards my natural and then just make Muras. Instead, I decided to forfeit my third and keep all my units at home in the hopes of Yona overcommitting. Sadly, that ended up not being the case and I even lost all my drones for my third base. Those mistakes definitely were on me and not the AI, but the game wasn't quite over yet. I managed to catch all of his offensive roaches on the retreat and with his queens exposed and the banes being focus fired by my Muras, I was given hope. That hope lasted for about a couple of seconds until I realized that plus one roaches were just a little too much for my links to handle, and with the spores finishing up, there was not much left for me to do. I tried for a couple of minutes to find holes in his defense, but he ended up turtling up to vipers on three bases and I conceded. Our next match was against a 6.2k Protoss. This time we had to play Hydra Lurker. This was actually one of the strategies I was the most afraid of, because it's not a bad strategy in a fun way. It just looks like normal play, because it is a legit composition up to Masters League, but it's actually really bad at the Grandmaster level. Usually in ZVP, you only build Lurkers against Stalker-based armies. If you play against something that is not a Stalker-based army, they can simply make Static D, a Fleet Beacon, and you have to transition. So in that case, you usually just make as many Lurkers as you can and all in before Skytos units hit the field. And most of the time, you barely have any Hydras fighting in those cases. Hydras plus Lurkers cost way too much gas for how bad the composition is. Either way, I figured if we can make Swarmos Corruptor work, we can do this. The early game went fairly well, and I managed to go up to 90 drones on 5 bases with a fully saturated gold base very quickly. Our opponent went for a Storm ground army composition, which works very well against Lurkers. Not only can you kite with Storm and hold aggressive positions, but it also transitions really nicely into Tempest or Carriers. We traded back and forth, I tried to always keep my army split and trade effectively without multitasking my opponent but he simply fortified his two most outside bases with cannons and defended very well. 
He got up Tempest nice and early to counteract me sieging his bases, and eventually transitioned into carriers. Even though I had Hydras with very good upgrades, they just fell off too much once the carriers hit the field. Even though I was maxed out during every engagement, I simply couldn't trade well enough with my already expensive army. Lurkers just aren't good at zoning out High Templars, and I never ended up killing any of the air units or the Templars themselves. Eventually I transitioned to Corruptors when I knew there was no other way, but to keep the integrity of the strategy alive, I stayed on Hydra Lurker for far too long and was too broke by the end. Next we ran into a 6.4k Protoss. We had to beat him with Roach, Ravager and Fester in order to keep the positive win rate of ChatGPT alive. To be honest, I was actually kind of looking forward to this strategy, hoping I would run into someone playing the hero style and failing to blink out of my fungus. After a standard early game, I scouted my opponent going for 6 gas, but not only that, I also scouted that he went for a Robo Bay. I knew the writing was on the wall right away. There is not much you can do with Roach Ravager and Fester against Stalker Colossus. I still remember Stefano beating Kivikaki with Roach and Fester back in the day, but nowadays Stalkers can simply avoid Fungals with blinks, since Fungal is a projectile. I tried my absolute hardest to find good fungals and have nice concaves, but I think that was the first loss that was simply impossible with the strategy I was given. After three losses in a row, it was important to get a win on the board, but the latter didn't make that easy for me, as we had to play against max packs. Our strategy was playing mass mutalisk and making corruptors once the Protoss adds their own air units to their army. Playing mutalisk is mostly just a thing against target into ground, so the first issue was that max packs played one of his favorite builds, the glaive opening. We defended the initial aggression near perfectly, forcing all of the shades to cancel and not overproducing units while doing so. The follow up was an adept stalker disruptor attack. At this point I already had a spire on the way because I was committed to the build given to us. But our early game was so good that after forcing a warp on his side of the map with a counter attack we came in with a surround and cleared his army up nicely. Usually all I have to do to clean up a game like this is max out on ravager, baneling and attack. This time, however, we had different plans. We instantly made 14 mutas after defending his pressure, and he never saw it coming. We've had such a powerful army that as long as he had his forces split, we could fight either of those sides. With that in mind, we immediately killed the fourth base of his. With the big eco advantage on our side, all we had to do at this point was trade evenly, and with that, we managed to beat Max Pex cleanly to get back that positive win rate. Since our next three strategies against Protoss were once again used up, I asked our friend ChatGPT for three new ones and went to grab some dinner. The three strategies were the best ones that were handed to us all day. Our tenth match was against another one of Europe's finest, Showtime. This time the instructions were to hit a Roach Ravager timing before our opponent can establish their attack and defenses, something that I did countless of times in tournaments against the best Protosses in the world. So it was time to bring the ladies and queen walk showtime. Since I knew from the beginning that I wanted to queen walk, I decided to expand towards my opponent. After a normal early game, I simply droned up to around 52 drones, made a lair and walked across. The lair was for creep on the other side, so my queens could transfuse. But it was barely necessary. Showtime didn't scout the timing and was surprised and left with no chance but to GG out. After beating the two best protosses in Europe, I gained some newly found confidence and I wanted to keep going. Our next opponent was another IEM round of 24 player in spirit. Our mission against him was to win with Lingbane Mura. To get there as fast as possible I went for a 2 base Mura opener, something that isn't common at the moment but it felt like it was exactly what the AI wanted me to do. Spirit tried to go for Banshee into mech and was completely caught off guard by the Muras. It was by far the most one sided game of the day so far, as he simply didn't have enough anti-air for the initial Muras and lost everything right away. The following match was a rematch against Showtime. This time we didn't get to Roach Ravager on him, instead we had to play Swarmhost Nidus, a strategy that was very powerful back in 2019 but barely is played anymore. The reason for it is that it's only good against target into non-blink ground. Any non-target opening or the hero style especially countered entirely. I started off hopeful since Showtime opened up with 3 oracles and our early game went very nicely. A little later I scouted that he was in fact going for the hero style which meant I needed to mass roaches to simply stay alive. I also made 5 swarmos and anitis to stay true to the instructions. After he overextended at a fight in our fourth base, I thought we had a chance for a couple of minutes. I gave it my best shot, splitting up roaches and sending swarmos on opposite sides, trying to get through to his economy. In the end, going for roach swarmos nidus against the hero style simply doesn't work. I believe I could have tried to get into lurkers on turtle lap after I forced his army back to his side of the map, but it was always going to be really hard to use the Swarmos Nidus effectively against Blink Stalkers, so that supply would be worth 
way more in actual fighting units or drones. I GG'd and continued to the last game of the day. Here we face the final and last protos of the day, the 6k player for Yumi. The final strategy was pretty much how I like to play usually. You make Munas and try to run by Banes, attempting to deal eco damage and either forcing my opponent to split his army or stay at home entirely. Since the strategy was something I would usually play, it was another easy game. My opponent went for an all-in army composition, but didn't even attempt to move out with his army till way too late, thanks to our Muras. That meant he had no win condition since his army didn't scale. I could simply roll over his army a little while later, even though I miss hotkeyed all my units three times <laughs> in the last two engagements to take the final W. And that was it. The final score of us playing with the AI's help was 8-5. We had a bunch of good players, but ended up with 6,778 MMR, so we lost a total of 35 MMR. This day full of games taught me a couple of things. It's quite fun to try and play certain styles and go into matches with a game plan like you sometimes do in a prepared tournament. But instead of predicting what your opponent does, you just play what you feel like. I was forced into positions I haven't been in before, with unit compositions I would usually never make. I even played my first late game since I changed my hotkeys and mouse around. In terms of my verdict on the AI, as impressive as it is, it has a lot of things to learn in terms of StarCraft 2. I'm not sure where it gets its information from, but most of the strategies it gave to me were outdated or simply bad. Still good enough to play competitively on the top EU level, however. I wonder how much ChatGPT can still get better over time in terms of strategies in StarCraft. Would you guys like to see this content again once the AI shows some improvements, or would you rather see me do the same thing maybe with Terran or Protoss, since those are not as reactive and a little bit more build order like? Anyway, how do you guys like today's video? Make sure to let me know in the comments so I can learn and improve my content. With that being said, for those of you who made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching, and I wish you guys all a goodbye.